I am not a born traveler, though I do pretend to be. As a child, my mom would have to bribe me to leave the house by offering up my favorite restaurants just so she and her friends could get lunch together. I was content to stay at home playing with Beanie Babies, playing with just forks and spoons, playing with my favorite toy wells in the bathtub. Traveling, though, has come to shape me, even if it was foreign to me in my early days. Traveling is interesting to me now principally because of the unique exposure and vulnerability a traveler faces. Cut off from home, away from the familiar, far from that which our minds and habits default toward. Traveling shows us who we are. It reveals to us our primal nakedness, our unconscious vulnerabilities, our very most public disclosures to the world. We cannot hide while traveling. We cannot conceal ourselves or deceive ourselves. Traveling is where I craft my own life story, my my story in the parlance of Gregory Ulmer. Traveling, in my experience, is usually a professional move. My career, teaching rhetoric and writing, demands it, whether it's hopping on a plane to Ohio to visit a graduate school or traversing the wide plains of Texas for an academic conference. My my story rose to my consciousness just a few weeks ago when, by incidental chance and by odd coincidence, I discovered in an obscure piece of trivia about my own personal name, my own label to the world. It turns out that in the formative years of the 20th century, the Russian revolutionist Vladimir Lenin adopted my name, Jacob Richter, as a pseudonym. Lenin's attempts at the time to evade Russian police in his England hideout had proved futile, and he began to sign official documents as Jacob Richter, the name my parents would Christian me with 70 years later. Lenin used the names to disguise himself to police, yes, but an interesting detail arises too. Lenin used the name Jacob Richter to conceal his own identity in an, an attempt to obtain a library card, of all things, at the British Library in London. My surprise at realizing Lenin had used my name as a means to obtain a library card stunned me, but eventually spurred me toward a place of invention, a place that Plato might call Cora. Lenin disguised himself to the world with my name, Jacob Richter. He concealed himself to the world with Jacob Richter. He masked himself to the world with Jacob Richter. Lenin and I have this in common. I, too, masked myself to the world with the name Jacob Richter. Lenin using my name is the entertainment within my my story, my connection to my community history. My name is language, sound, voice. For me, my name also connects me to my family, whom I've always in some ways concealed myself from. We share a last name, we share a history, but inside of my first name, I deceive at times as the black sheep of my family. Jacob Richter, a pseudonym for Vladimir Lenin, deception for him, deception for me. The Greeks used the word apate to connote deception, and somehow this seems fitting for my own story. Apate is the family portion of the, of the pop cycle. My career, though, is as a writer, and here I've also exercised apate. Many writers, of course, have used pseudonyms. George Orwell feared embarrassing his family, just as I did, but really he was always Eric Blair. Likewise, Lewis Carroll was really Charles Dogson, even the Bronte sisters were Color, Ellis, and Acton Bell, and Voltaire was Francois Maria Rowe. I asked myself, what would my pseudonym be? Perhaps for my my story, locating my pseudonym might be the inverse of what it was for Lenin. My pseudonym might, be, might not be so much of a deception, not so much of apate, but might instead take on the empowering capacity to unconceal me to the world, to divulge and expose cathartically, to enact Apate's counterpart in the Greek language aletheia, the word the Greeks used to describe the rising and disclosing of truth. Now my pseudonym seems an odd one at first. The pseudonym found me in a random online anagram generator, and I knew I belonged to it. As an anagram, my pseudonym shares all the same letters as the name Lennon and I have in common. My pseudonym then is this. I am Orca Jet Birch. Orca Jet Birch. My pseudonym functions to round out my my story. It begins as such, as a child, I was infatuated with whales, especially killer whales, orcas, the first part of my pseudonym. This is my image of Widescope, not a whale in the ocean, but a plastic whale, a toy bought from a supermarket grocery aisle, a toy that a child buoys and spurs through the water of a bathtub. The image of the toy orca is not one of reality, but of imagination, of play, of trueness to the world. The pseudonym anagram hybrid Orca Jet Birch also unconceals the word jet, which represents the jet of my childhood, my old bike which, which was named Red Rocket, circling again back to my family. 
Finally, Orca Jet Birch unconceals my favorite tree, the birch tree. Birch trees are unique, as their bark can be peeled off and written on, nature's paper that indigenous Americans would use as a writing material, which happens to, to connect back to my discipline and to my school. Orca Jet Birch, my pseudonym and my anagram, completes my my story by bridging the elements of my life into that way in which I present myself to the outside world, namely, through my name. The my story for me is a mechanism of unconcealing the ways in which we conceal ourselves, of using family, entertainment, discipline, and school to circumvent Apatea and begin to take steps toward Alethea. Apatea and Alethea form the pattern that connects the seemingly disconnected aspects of my my story. My career as a teacher, my discipline studying rhetoric and writing, my community relation to Vladimir Lenin, and finally my ult the ultimate struggle in my life, unveiling and disguising myself, my deception, my apate, which I first did with my family by trying to be someone else, a central struggle in my early life. It is through my my story that I begin to reveal myself, to unconceal myself, to move towards self-truth, and toward Alethea. Speaking your true voice, your true name based on meanings important to you, turns out to be its own type of traveling. You're still vulnerable, you're still defenseless and exposed, but suddenly the world is opened before you in all its wonder. Alethea. By choosing your name, you choose the destination you end up at. In my my story, I've crafted a new alternate name all my own, the bizarre sounding Orca Jet Birch, the anagram pseudonym hybrid of the name the world gave to me, Vladimir Lenin's pseudonym, Jacob Richter. And in doing so, I begin a journey through the Korra and through myself that enacts Alethea and unconceals me to the world.